Major funding for NJTV News is provided in part by the members of the New Jersey Education Association, making public schools great for every child. And PSE&G, we make things work for communities. Hello, tonight on NJTV News, expanding the ferry flotilla. Officials announced federal funding for a new ferry from Carteret to Manhattan and say ferries could be commuter salvation if the Hudson Tunnels ever fail. What was said at the latest NJTV drug addiction crisis forum? Plus, Trump targets Big Pharma over rising drug prices. Will his words be backed up by actions? And packing purses for homeless mothers. This is what a caring community looks like. Those stories are more next on NJTV News. Live from the Agnes Barris NJTV studio at 2 Gateway Center in Newark, this is NJTV News with Mary Alice Williams. Hello, thank you for joining us. Fueled by a $6 million federal grant, the long sought dream of ferry service, <clears throat> excuse me, ferry service from Middlesex County to Midtown Manhattan in under an hour could finally be realized. Senior correspondent Brenda Flanagan reports on what could become commuters' plan B. Elected officials announced a $6 million federal grant that'll buy a ferry boat for Carteret. The borough's building a commuter ferry terminal to be constructed here along the Arthur Kill Channel across from Staten Island. NJ Transit will use the grant to buy a 299-seat passenger ferry and lease it back to the borough for a buck a year, another option for frustrated commuters. There are times where they're stuck at the rail line or they're stuck at the bus terminal for two or three hours waiting to get out. We've all been in Manhattan, we've all taken NJ Transit, we've all recognized the need for additional infrastructure. The mayor says he expects operators like New York Waterways will bid to operate the ferry service and provide additional boats to run on the hour between Carteret and Manhattan's Pier 9 and 11, although transportation experts note larger ships in the channel could create delays. Carteret's only the latest waterfront city to hook into a growing regional ferry system operating between the Jersey Coast and Manhattan. Bayonne just got a $650,000 grant to add another ferry terminal. It's a developing network with a larger purpose. It also allows for, God forbid, as the senator mentioned, some sort of future emergency or need to do a mass evacuation or get residents or commuters out of, the st out of uh, Manhattan. In one worst case scenario, the century old commuter train tunnels under the Hudson River, already corroded by Sandy, could suffer catastrophic failure. A fleet of ferries could help reroute commuters. There would have to be a surge of ferry traffic. Uh, that also means having the infrastructure in place to be able to deal with such a surge. So while, for example, New York waterways and other ferry operators slow down during the course of their day until the high peak hours early in the morning, late in the afternoon, they might have to run all day long. It might be uh, a good opportunity for New Jersey Transit to understand that it can be a great asset to their overall transportation system. It's very important because something could happen and what you want to know is where do you want to invest your effort and money in case something does go wrong? Transit analyst Martin Robbins, who consults for New York Waterways, recalled how NJ Transit offered subsidized ferry runs from Hoboken to 39th Street during the so-called summer of hell. Well, there was good ridership, very good passenger feedback, and I think that it's something that shouldn't be lost on us, you know, with the turnover at New Jersey Transit and so on. This is, this is uh, something that needs to be recaptured and tested. It could really lead to even a more aggressive program of using ferries. Ultimately, the Gateway Tunnel Project would build new rail tunnels under the Hudson, but the Trump administration's blocking funding, sparking a political battle. The ferry service is great. It's going to have a lot of people hop on it, uh, so they don't even have to get into the rail service. But at the end of the day, it cannot be a substitute. It cannot be a substitute for the Gateway Tunnel. It'll take New Jersey Transit at least a couple years to buy the new ferry for Carteret but it'll take at least that long to get the ferry terminal up and running here on the waterfront. In Carteret, I'm Brenda Flanagan, NJTV News. President Trump trained his sights on prices for prescription drugs. That tops the state of New Jersey's business. Rhonda Schaffler has that story and a lot more. Rhonda? Mary Alice, President Trump unveiled his plan to lower drug prices for consumers today 
The administration proposed several changes, such as speeding up approvals for generics and over-the-counter medications and increasing transparency for drug prices. During the announcement at the White House earlier today, Trump took aim at the pharmaceutical industry for unfairly protecting its monopolies on drugs and for the industry spending on lobbyists. Bobby is making an absolute fortune at the expense of American consumers. No industry spends more money on lobbying than the pharmaceutical health products industry. Last year, these companies spent nearly $280 million on lobbyists. That's more than tobacco, oil, and defense contractors combined. But the stocks of pharmaceutical companies with operations in New Jersey, including Merck, J&J, Bristol-Myers, and Novartis, moved higher following the announcement because it did not include tougher measures, such as using Medicare's buying power to directly negotiate lower drug prices for seniors. A Chinese company illegally collected personal data from an unknown number of New Jersey children who downloaded its smartphone apps. According to the state attorney general's office, the software company May 2 will have to pay $100,000 in a fine and must now obtain parental consent before collecting any data. May 2's smartphone apps are used to touch up and change online photos. Turning to our retail roundup for the week, Whole Foods could be opening in Jersey City. The Jersey Journal reports the chain is close to signing a deal to open in one of Mac Cali's harborside buildings near the waterfront. The paper reports an earlier plan to open a Whole Foods near City Hall has been scrapped. That mall in the Meadowlands is making significant progress, according to American Dreams developer Triple Five Worldwide. During a presentation this week at the Bergen Business Expo, the mega mall developer said 80 percent of the retail space is leased and 60 percent of the construction is complete. The mall is due to open next year. Turning now to Wall Street, stocks closed mostly higher. The Dow was up 91 points and the NJCU index of 50 New Jersey companies rose three points. And those are our top business stories. New Jersey's joined another multi-state effort to push back against Trump administration policies, this time over how data is collected on violence against members of the LGBTQ community. The Department of Justice has decided to raise the age at which people are asked about it from 16 to 18 due to concerns about the potential sensitivity of these questions for adolescents. But the letter signed by Attorney General Graywall notes questions relating to a crime victim's sexuality are voluntary and confidential, and that the DOJ's own report showed high school LGBTQ members are almost twice as likely to be victimized. The letter contends LGBTQ youth count on law enforcement to protect them, and depriving them of the relevant data won't help. Drug overdoses are on pace to become the sixth leading cause of death in New Jersey. New state data published by the Attorney General's office shows the state could eclipse 3,000 drug deaths in 2018. That would be a record for the third straight year, almost entirely blamed on the opioid crisis. NJTV brought together experts in the field for a public conversation about the latest challenges and achievements, about obstacles to recovery and options for treatment. Michael Hill moderated the forum in Newark, tackling New Jersey's drug addiction crisis. Well, unfortunately, one of the things that I haven't seen is that access to treatment uh, has not become ubiquitous. The sobering status from Stephen Sterling at the latest NJTV drug addiction crisis forum in Newark's Metropolitan Baptist Church. Sterling's Heroin Town series created the framework for New Jerseyans' understanding of the depths of the addiction epidemic. What we have seen, though, is, uh, unfortunately, is the number of African-American people who have died in the past year or two has spiked dramatically. Sterling says research shows it's primarily older users from the 70s and 80s now introduced to fentanyl, the powerful and cheap synthetic lacing heroin that's readily available to an unsuspecting clientele. For my guys in Jersey City that I work with, I said, you know, are you doing fentanyl? They said, no, 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 no. And we did the toxicology reports, and every single tox screening was fentanyl, 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 fentanyl. You know, they were like, they were shocked. They were surprised. 
Former Governor Jim McGreevy chairs the New Jersey Reentry Corporation. He says the state needs a political consensus for long-term care to stop the 28-day revolving door. And it's not the best practices. It's not what yields the best results. When you're working with a chronic illness, it's important that you stay connected, connected. with the individual and that you continue to provide the support for as long as necessary. If that support needs to be one year, it'll be one year. Uh, if it needs to be three years, it'll be three years. Uh, similar to someone that's receiving treatment for diabetes. Nonprofits say treatment becomes complicated when the addiction comes with mental illness. Professional staff needs to become more educated and needs to keep working towards in fully integrating treatment and fully understanding. It's one thing to give it lip service, but we live it every day. And so do families who call NJ Connect for Recovery's hotline. Some learn how unwittingly they've been enabling. They don't like that word. I know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but during the conversation, it, it, it has to come up. And we've been thinking of um, ways to use kinder, gentler words to let folks know that you know, you, you, you need to uh, break the court a little bit. Metropolitan Baptist says it has a center that helps families and the afflicted. We particularly like to use, if I may use this phrase, wounded healers. We like to connect persons with persons who have gone through the pathway and who have experienced recovery. The Drug Enforcement Administration was at this forum and said it's doing a number of things to combat this issue. We have a program called the CARES Initiative and it's looking at early childhood trauma. Like we're, we're trying to look upstream and, and look at that early on so that young folks that are exposed to traumatic events can get attention earlier on so that this doesn't continue to build and build and now they seek you know, alternative ways of dealing with that trauma. The DEA has partners such as ADAPT. It collects roughly 3,000 pounds a year of unused prescription drugs from 17 drop-off sites in Essex County. Plus, it educates teens about the current deadly dangers of addiction. So it's not that we're using fear tactics. Fear tactics are research-based. Uh, as far as research-based information goes, fear tactics do not work. One person in the audience suggested that some with the disease of addiction are beyond help. The response from Sterling, who's in recovery. What I would say is that a lot of people die before they find it. Um, but I don't think that means that everybody can't find it. In Newark, Michael Hill, NJTV News. Help for young people struggling with behavioral or mental health issues. That tops tonight's Garden State Express. Our first stop, Mays Landing, where messages of encouragement written in chalk mark National Children's Mental Health Awareness Day. More than a dozen students at Oak Crest High School joined Atlanta Care's Messages of Hope Chalk Project. Their school has a teen center students can turn to for help with anxiety, stress, bullying, or depression, whether the troubles at school or at home. One student left a message in blue chalk on the sidewalk, reminding others that it won't be easy, but it will get better. Next to Atlantic City, where mothers who are homeless are getting help this Mother's Day, a local nonprofit called Princess Inc. has collected as many as a thousand new and gently used handbags, along with donated toiletries and cosmetics, tissues, toothbrushes and toothpaste, wipes, hairbrushes, hand sanitizer, and nail polish. Volunteers will be delivering the packed purses to women at a day center for the homeless, a recovery center, senior your housing complexes, and even the bus terminal. Finally, Hohokus, where NJ Transit's watching you, quietly installing surveillance cameras on the Metro North trains they run on the Port Jervis and Pascac Valley lines. The last time NJ Transit tried surveillance on light rails two years ago, the monitoring prompted such outcry, the rail line scrapped it. Well, this time, NJ Transit officials gave specific guidelines for how recordings of passengers will be handled. Guidelines ACLU officials said NJ Transit should post on its website. The footage will be preserved for only 30 to 40 days. Only authorized employees may watch videos, and no one is allowed to tamper with, modify, or delete recordings. Also, they say the new train cameras will not be constantly monitored and will not record audio, meaning if there's an incident or emergency, passengers will still need to call police or alert train crews. 
And that's our Garden State Express for Friday, May 11th. Something up in your neighborhood? Tip us off. The deadline to have a balanced state budget is looming. The governor has just until June 30th to get lawmakers' agreement on a progressive policy agenda that requires raising taxes by $1.5 billion by imposing a tax hike on millionaires, restoring the 7% sales tax. Neither Senate President Steve Sweeney nor the Assembly Speaker have shown any enthusiasm for either. Chief Political Correspondent Michael Aaron asked Monmouth University Polling Institute Director Patrick Murray to put on the record whether Murphy's likely to get the tax hike he wants. I think there will, there will be a tax increase. It's probably not going to be one of those. Maybe it's going to be Sweeney's corporate tax uh, increase. There will be a tax increase to help pay for some of these things, but it's not going to be what the governor has asked for. In Why fact, uh, because uh, there are a number of Democrats in leadership, the Senate president and the speaker among them, um, who have significant reservations about particularly the millionaire's tax uh, because of the impact that the SALT deduction has, or the, the SALT cap has on New Jersey. And there are a lot of folks who don't believe that the, the, the charity deduction bill that was just passed to kind of offset, I mean, this is just too much to explain, but that was passed to, will, will actually pass legal muster, uh, which means they're not going to impose a millionaire's tax uh, because that would make us that much less competitive uh, to our neighbors, particularly Pennsylvania. So that they're worried what, what about you're saying, what money you're, flowing out of New Jersey if we do that. What you're saying is uh, you're saying that the cap on state and local tax deductions in the new federal law hurts the wealthy. I think I've read that because the tax rates are cut so much that the wealthy are, are still going to make it's, 60, 70 thousand dollars. Right. One of the things that we know in polling is it's not whether you feel that you got your taxes have gone down, but have your taxes gone down relative to everybody else. You can watch Michael's entire interview Saturday evening at 630 and again Sunday morning at 1030. Tuesday's election sent three New Jersey mayors back into office and sent two packing. Irvington's mayor-elect fills an empty mayor seat, and the mayor's race in Trenton is undecided. But the new mayor of Patterson, who's replacing a woman who'd replaced a convicted felon, is facing arguably the biggest challenge. Mayor-elect Andre Saya joined senior correspondent David Cruz. You are the child of immigrants, right? You're... Is it Lebanese and Syrian? Correct. Yeah. So the son of immigrants in an immigrant city, it's got to, that's got to feel a little special, right? It, it certainly does. And Patterson's the only home I've ever known. I actually was raised by my mother, so a single immigrant who drove a bus, and she was a driving force in my life. And what she wanted was for my brother and me to get a quality education. I went to Seton Hall University, graduated at the top of my class, and then earned my master's degree from Columbia University in public policy and administration. Mm. So... This is third time's the charm, right? We, we <laughs> and saw each other. And you're out. Right. And you're a we, fellow Mets fan. You know what suffering's all yes. about, David. We saw you on Friday, and um, you said, if I don't win this time, that I, I just can't run again. Right. But this has been, uh, I mean, a 12 years of a journey to this position. Correct. Right? Well, like I stated before, I'm a proud Pattersonian, and I felt deeply that this is Patterson's time. Patterson's waiting to happen. Newark is happening. Jersey City has happened. Camden is happening as well. It's Patterson's turn. We got all the right ingredients, David. We have geography. We're in the backyard of New York City. We have the diversity. We have 72 different ethnic groups. And we have the history. We're the first planned industrial city in the United States founded by Alexander Hamilton. So all the ingredients are there. We just needed the right chef to stir the pot for Patterson. It seems to me it feels like it's a great old house that needs like a gut rehab. Correct. That's the kind of feeling I get. Well, that's something I stated on the... Did you, did you see oh, what I no, said? I okay, all right, okay. No, 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 no. I said, look, Pat's the only home I ever know. We're in need of home improvement. Yeah. And I believe I'm the right repairman for the city. So where does it begin? I mean, you've <laughs> right. got everything from crime, uh, unemployment, stagnant economic development. What's the first 
thing you got to do. Public safety. We have a very yeah. capable police director in Jerry Spiziel. We're seeing a reduction in crime, but we obviously have some more work cut out for us. We're going to be hiring 25 cops this summer. Then next year, there's the potential of 70 retirements within the police department, which conceivably, if they all retire and 59 percent of them are supervisory roles, for every one that retires, we could potentially hire two police officers. Now, how will we deploy them? I want to see more foot patrol. I want these individuals, these officers, to be patrolling the neighborhoods on foot that they're supposed to protect and serve. And then we want to bolster our narcotics unit because we do have a drug, drug epidemic, unfortunately, in Patterson. And then if my vision comes to fruition of turning the Great Falls National Park into a top-notch tourist attraction, you're going to need a metro division within the police department to patrol that area. Well, that's very optimistic. We'll get to some of the things about that, that you need to monetize uh, to, to get some economic Correct. activity in, in the city as well. But the reality is um, that despite your huge victory, you won every ward, 95 percent of the precincts in town, still two of the three people who ran for the at-large seats are against you. You don't have a council majority, do you? I don't. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's got to be part of job one also, right? Correct. It's all about cultivation. I mean, that's essentially how we won. We, we made net gains. Yeah. So there were people in the past, in 2014, that weren't with us. We were able to create this multicultural coalition. It, the message of one Patterson resonated because I said we're six wards, but one Patterson, 146,000. How do you get there, though? How do we get there? Yeah. Well, it's I mean, a, how do you get it, to getting a council that right. works with you, et cetera? It's about getting buy-in on the vision. I mean, I, in all my years in the council, I've been there for 10 years, I can't recall the mayor and council at least going on retreat and discussing what our respective visions are for the yeah. aligning our efforts. We all come in with an agenda, right? But I feel like the common ground we can find is on common goals, public safety, economic development, quality of life. So like a weekend at Passaic County... Uh, community, community college, college at the Hamilton Club. Right. Did you read my mind? Or have you been like following me no. or something? David? Okay. <laughs> I would never dare th research a story that I was working on, man. <laughs> Don't ever accuse me of that. But uh, on a more serious note, the two of the last three mayors in, in this city have either left in handcuffs or been censured by the governing body. Uh, <clears throat> voter participation was down this year. Right. We were there last week and we've been over the past year. Uh, a lot of voters and residents who don't vote just have had it up to here. Yes, they have. How do you change that around? What message right. do you bring to them to say, listen, in four years, you're not going to see me, you know, doing some of the things that my predecessors have. Pattersonians deserve good government. They got to get a return on their investment. They're paying high taxes. So the mayor has to be a presence. And in addition to be a presence, the mayor has to be transparent. So I'm working on a first rate transition team turnkey that into an administration that reflects the population and that is comprised of high quality cabinet officers. So job one is stopping crime, correct, creating economic development, all of these things. I mean, do you feel a little bit like, what have I done here? <laughs> well, there's some projects we're working on that are essentially going to manifest within the first 100 days. The Great Falls is undergoing a three million dollar renovation. So we'll be cutting we the ribbon. a lot of that work going you saw on. That. Yeah, yeah. So we're cutting the ribbon on an amphitheater. The police officers will be hired by the time I take office. And then also, I'd like to bring in a grant writer. Patterson doesn't have a grant writer. It's very important. There's money out there that is just out for other municipalities, and Patterson's not really competitive in that area. And, and you really have to showcase the diversity because there's so many communities that are, that are thriving in Patterson that you don't hear about. Well, I represent the 6th Ward. South Patterson is by far the most vibrant business district. Union Avenue has a large Bengali population. I want to get them to that point as well. But you use the operative word, monetize. Yeah. We've got to monetize our diversity. We've got to capitalize on it. And the, and the false. All right, Mayor Andre Saya, congratulations, David, and thank we'll see you. you out there. David, I want to make a special presentation here. Oh, I know that you've been I to tried Patterson. to get you to give me yes. that yes, last when week. I was there, yeah. Well, right now, it's all yours, David. Well, thank you, Mayor. I it love says, Patterson, and I hope you do, too. I love too. Patterson. Pretty cool. Thanks, Mayor-elect. Thank you.
And now some noteworthy facts that help you know Jersey. Adapt in Essex County collects roughly 3,000 pounds of unused prescription drugs every year. Andre Sea is Patterson's first Arab American mayor. As of 2014, the Hunter College Center for Puerto Rican Studies says Puerto Ricans comprise 27% of New Jersey's Latino population. And New York Waterway has ferried 30,000 daily commuters across the Hudson since 2007. If there's someone who you'd like to get to know Jersey, share. Use hashtag. No Jersey. Next week on NJTV News, we speak with the director of New Jersey's Office of Homeland Security and Preparedness. To share any story you've seen tonight, go to njtvnews.org. I'm Mary Alice Williams. For all the men and women of NJTV News, thanks for being here. Happy Mother's Day to you who are mothers, have mothers, or love mothers. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. NJM Insurance Group, serving the insurance needs of New Jersey residents and businesses for more than 100 years. And Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association.